Hello, this is a quick walkthrough video of our Engage Teaching Workshop from October 21st, where we talked about the second phase of our planning um, set of modules around assessment and grading. So if you are unable to join us on Friday, October 21st, please take a look at this quick walkthrough video and the link to the slides is also in the newsletter. Just a reminder, we don't, I don't uh, record our sessions live so that we can have an open dialogue as faculty and staff in the meeting and keep our conversations confidential. So that's why this is a quick walkthrough. So in the meeting, we did four things. We defined the differences between assessment and grading. We talked about how assessment is connected to curriculum planning, and we shared three grading types and we finished off by building a mini library of open education resources that we can go to as faculty and staff to look for materials about assessment and grading. So we began by looking at a map of where we are and where we have been. So in this engaged teaching map in these five main element areas, we've talked about teaching foundations and the planning area. We have three, met, three meetings planned identifying learning goals, objectives, and outcomes, and assessment and grading was this meeting. And then we jumped right in where we left off. So in our first planning meeting, we really talked about the design and figuring out what it is we want students to know. And then in this session, we talked about what it is we want them to be able to do with that information through assessment and grading. And we began by talking about what the difference is between assessment and grading. They're not exactly the same. So assessment focuses on providing evidence that students can demonstrate knowledge or skills directly linked to program outcomes. The focus is on the entire cohorts of students and how effectively everyone, not an individual faculty member, is helping them learn. So comprehensively, how are things, um, how are students understanding what it is that is a part of the courses and programs that we teach. Grading focuses on an individual student's performance and it represents the extent to which a student has successfully met the faculty member's requirements for expectations for a particular course. So when we're grading a student in our course, we're grading them as an individual. And we talked about in the meeting, uh, these two questions, what resonates with us in these two tables of different definitions. What, how do we feel about what we saw there and how did it relate to our own experience as an educator? And then we, <clears throat> we, went, we, we returned to <clears throat> assessment and talking about building off of our curriculum design in our previous meetings. We talked about how Blooms has changed over time. <clears throat> and when it was originally um, designed in 1956, the lower order thinking skills to higher order thinking skills used these words, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. These are based in neuroscience. The uh, higher order thinking skills engage different parts of the brain and help assist in pattern seeking and long-term learning Could because we know the brain's a pattern seeking device. And then in 2001, there was some, um, as we continue to learn more about brain, the brain and how it learns, these terms were adapted slightly to more of an action-seeking, action-verb terminology. And you'll notice that creating, that when students are able to analyze, evaluate, and reflect on what it is they have learned to create something new, that's a higher order thinking skill that helps the brain build a pattern for long-term memory. So we, we jumped off from there in our discussion to an example of a learning goal, objective, and outcome. And we had some members in the from our history uh, department that have been doing some group curriculum design present in the workshop. And they shared this example with the group, or I read it and they shared what it is they what they were doing in our meetings to help figure out what it is we want students to know and what we want them to be able to do with that information. So here we were building off of things that we had talked about last week with an example of a, a program and a, pro, a course within a program um, that is currently working on um, 
learning goals, learning objectives, and learning outcomes. And we were, I was pleased to have some folks share that information. They shared an example of what it is that they have been building. And there was, we, there's a link in this slide to um, the revised version of Blooms and a list of action verbs that you can click on to look at as you think about assessing learning outcomes. Okay, so when we had, um, when we had shared an example from Chat State in our history department, we talked about how our grading system in the United States has largely been the same for over a hundred years. So we had, we know what assessment means. And now when we think about grading, it, it, it's been, while we have new teaching methods and new pedagogies based on brain research and neuroscience, we haven't necessarily made all of those adaptations when it comes to grading. So we talked a little bit about history one room schoolhouses and when teachers pulled over small groups of students to assess their understandings. The way in which scoring or grading has gone back and forth between letter grades and number grades, often led by our lead institutions, historically Harvard and Yale in the United States and previous to that, but on a scale of zero to 100 and grading and numerical uh, grading cards switch back and forth between what has been trendy at the time with still within that 100 point scale. And we talked a lot about how so early early IQ tests and the early part of the 20th century helped us think about grade curves and norm normative distribution and curving scores uh, on a bell curve. But that, again, isn't always the way isn't, isn't matching what we currently know about how the brain learns best, what's culturally responsive or brain compatible. So we started talking about education by thinking about our origin and how we became educators and how our education origin story may influence or it influences how we think about grading, our own personal experiences and maybe our teaching experiences. So I took a couple of minutes to share my education origin story so that um, I would be try to be transparent about some of the biases that I have that are hard for me to leave behind when I talk about assessment and grading. So I just talk, talked about how when I first started working and I, I worked in a place where the teaching was a case study approach. So very much geared towards a th authentic assessment, but still hanging on to a zero to hundred grading scale. And then I jumped to working here in Tennessee at a school that was completely narrative reporting. There were no grading, there was no check, there were no, um, uh, that we were entirely portfolio based. We, we were also no textbooks, so all open education resources before they really had that term. And how I've kind of, depending on where I have lived and where I have worked, I have kind of gone back and forth between working in places where a traditional zero to 100 or A through F scale was, was uh, part of the equation and transitioned or grew in those positions positions into places where they were had more um, equity-based grading and specifications grading, where we looked at different scales and different types of measures in order to align best with brain-compatible teaching practices for assessment and grading. So this was a great way for us to say, hey, there are some constraints with where you work, but what can you do in within those situations that are best ways to, to serve your students and to have the most um, equitable ways for measuring student outcomes? So I we, we jumped right in with grading, with looking at three different types based on three different educational research researchers. We started with specs grading. And we went kind of from, these are all newer books, but we started from the oldest of the newer books to the newest books. So specifications grading, equity grading, and what's called ungrading. And we jumped right in with specifications grading, which is educational research work done by Linda Nielsen. And she has two other very popular books that are actually copies. We have copies in the CARE library about online teaching and teaching at its best. Um, and her specifications grading is focused around bundles and uh, putting curricula, uh, putting uh, assessment 
um, pieces for students into bundles where they have a clear view of what would need, need to be expected for an A, B, C, or D grade outcome, or if, it, if another grading scale is used, say a four point um, a narrative based assessment, um, that's entirely transparent to students. So I shared this example from the University of Oklahoma, Dr. Caroline, she um, has her bundle set up for her courses. And I, I like this example because here's where uh, Carolyn went back in and said, hey, these expectations are a little bit more than I have the bandwidth for grading. And you can see in the circles where she's narrowed things down. So we talked about challenges with this. I shared my own challenges with this as I found um, specifications difficult for me sometimes because it was hard for me to let go of the fact that a student might not choose to do all of the assignments that I had put through if they're very satisfied with the B grade. Um, so, and I also found this more challenging when I had shorter courses. In other words, when I taught over a summer session or a shorter session than over a full semester of 15 weeks, because I was really lean, practicing lean lesson planning and uh, each of my, and, and each of my assignments were critical in my short courses to assessing student understanding. So we talked about that and I shared my own experiences there. I also found specific, specification grading worked well for me when I was teaching a math or stats class because the skills build upon each other. And I found that personally, I was okay with someone choosing a not to do an assignment um, because I knew I would be assessing it in other ways. But I found specifications grading very difficult when I taught educational research courses. Okay. So Grading for Equity is another book from 2018. It's written by Joe Feldman. And um, I should mention the quotes I chose to talk about each quotes from each author, I think tell a lot about themselves and who they are. Um, Joe Feldman um, had started in K-12 in Atlanta. He's lived in New York and he's been a school principal and, and worked for this uh, um, district office and is in California right now. And so he's seen assessment from many different avenues and he recognizes that it's not always part of our professional development work. His work is very highly influenced by John Dewey. And so I have a picture of John Dewey there. Um, and then also his work is very influenced by, or I find it to be very similar to Zaretta Hammond's work um, and her book, Culture, Culturally Responsive Teaching in the Brain, which we just finished a summer book chat on this topic. So. An example of um, some of Joe Feldman's work began with this a study he did himself in his own school building, where he looked at three of his teachers teaching sixth grade English and looked at the way in which their grades were being um, distributed and said, you know what, there's something, we need to fix something here. And we, or we need to examine this more closely. Why is it that teacher one, teacher two, and teacher three are grading so differently? So he, the, he talks a lot about equitable grading practices being practices that are accurate and mathematically sound, practices that value knowledge, not the environment or behavior, and practices that support hope and growth mindset, practices that lift the veil on how to, how to exceed, succeed. He's not in favor of a zero through 100 grading score, not in favor of extra credit assignments, similarly to uh, Linda Nielsen, um, and saying that um, students should have equitable access to the measures that are being used. So offering extra credit or extra opportunities to boost the grades may not be equitable for others. And it may, uh, or offering, uh, he also talks a lot about participation grades and how um, oftentimes students may be rewarded for being an extrovert or speaking up in class where that is not a true necessarily measure of their knowledge where you may have a quieter student who speaks up less in class with a, with a greater understanding of the topic. So um, those are two things he talks about strongly. Then we shared um, the ungrading book and this is um, from 2020. And there are Susan Bloom, 
is the editor of the book. So there's many different authors within the book and Al Alfie Cohen writes the foreword and we shared a couple of quotes from them, which you can see on the slides. If learning is interesting, people will do it. Grades dilute the pleasures of a student experience on successfully completing a task. So similar on all three of these different grading types is the idea that offering extra credit or extra participation is not equitable and not a true measure of student understanding. But the way in which grades are collected are very different amongst the three. Specifications grade, grading being more of the um, assigned to specific tasks, a rigorous pass-fail model, and um, equity grading and ungrading having a greater span of revise and resubmit options in order to adjust grading. And I just picked one example from, the, from ungrading, um, a professor, Jesse Stommel, and he um, has this great illustration, or I've modified the illustration a little bit, about small things you can do to start on grading. And so he has changed the way you talk about grading, grade less stuff, less often, grade more simply, invite students to conversations about grade and ask students to reflect on their own uh, learning. And there are a few, um, a few pieces that are added to this that you can explore in the attach PDF or pause the video here to read. And then lastly, in our meeting, we built a mini library. So we took some time to, sorry, took some time to uh, put together some, some information in a Google Sheet, which is will be in the attached slides so that you can explore it yourself to look at, to gather different ways that we can explore these topics further. We even discussed how some of these books will be, these books will be available in the CARE Library and forming small groups to continue to talk about grading. So if you have, would like any additional information, please reach out. And thank you so much for watching.